One of the other things that is typically uh, done as a part of uh, high-level assessments as to whether a strategy is a good strategy has to do with risk. What's our risk of doing that? So we have three uh, properties of risk, one which is capability risk. Inside of our company, do we have the right set of people and equipment and tools to do what we're asking to do. If it requires special training that, for example, none of these people know anything about PMO, um, then how are they going to effectively sell to people who are running PMOs? Uh, they need to understand what a PMO is, you know, what problems it are run into, what solutions there are for PMO. So that may, may require some training. Market risk. So is this adjacent to our market? Meaning that some of our customers that we worked in the past, maybe we were working with the finance organization and now we want to work with a PMO organization. Well, they're in the same company. So we get an internal reference. That's kind of adjacent market. But if it's in a place where the people we're selling to are completely different than the people that we're selling to today, and that they don't even listen to the same marketing channels, meaning that another part of marketing has to do with communication. How do we communicate with these people? How do they even know we exist? How do they know what products we have? So that the line of communication or the path of communication may be completely different about how something gets to the attention of a CFO as to compare to, for example, how it gets to a CMO. We need to take those into account from the standpoint of we don't do those things today, it's a risk. There's a risk that we won't figure it out quite correctly and that things will actually take longer or cost more than we anticipate. So this is risk factor. The other part of this is the products and services that we have today. Can we just ship the products and services we have today just in this other market? Or are there some additional things that we would have to provide in this market in order for them to be interested in this product and service? Or is this market so different than all the other markets that we're going to have to build brand new product for this market? Obviously, the, if we're using existing products and services, there's a minimum amount of risk there because we already know the products and services. Um, if we're making adjustments to the product, um, there's some risk in doing that. But again, they're based on existing products and services. But if we're building something brand new from scratch, then the risk is fairly high that we might actually get something wrong and there's a good probability that this would not succeed. But what it helps to do is, is to break down and make you think about the aspect, the attributes of this particular strategy. So you, you can compare it with other strategies and say, well, look, the risk on this one's really low. It has a good opportunity to succeed. It doesn't take us a whole lot to do. So maybe this is something we want to do as compared to something which has really high risk, has kind of a minimal impact on the revenue growth. And it's going to cost us a lot to do. Again, our goal here is to kind of rank and sort out these uh, strategies. If we look at the strategies from a higher level again, what we want to be able to do is to show the in ranked order of these things that grow the business 200% year over year, which of these are most likely to succeed? You know, sell to existing Salesforce customers. Well, that sounds good, but the price tag for getting into a conference, we're talking about $50,000 or more uh, for each conference that we go to with them to get to their customer base. So there's a huge cost factor for those. Sell independently from Salesforce. Well, that means we also go to other conferences and their cost of that. We also have to convince them of the, being a cloud-based uh, business with a lot of companies seem to have some fear about security of their data. So each of these comes with its pluses and minuses. And what we want to do is to sign a, take a high-level articulation of what the pluses and minuses are and then they have a ranking of these. Uh, we can either do it manually by looking at these and having a roundtable discussion with people and say, okay, what do you think? Is this high, medium, or low risk? Is this high, medium, or low cost? And high, medium, or low revenue potential? And we can just use those high, medium, lows to help us to at least get a high-level ranking of these particular strategies and know which ones that we want to try first. The business management module get to deal with these high-level, what we would sometimes refer to as strategic planning issues and strategic planning process. Uh, some companies also may do what's called SWOT analysis. So you can create a SWOT analysis from here. You can, uh, SWOT analysis stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So in this case, for SWOT analysis, you can see that from a technical side, we have app and, and visual force are experiencing that very high where that's a strength that we can capitalize on. Where Salesforce's touch screen stuff, uh, we kind of have a medium level experience with that. The information for that is externally sourced. So we might actually characterize that as actually a weakness. So this is the way if you're having a SWOT uh, item analysis, you can go through and, and add these items and then you can sort them by type to get the strengths and weaknesses. So the, the central elements of the business uh, management piece, again, our charter, the values of the company, the objectives, and then the strategies. And then 
an objective usually has some target. It has to be measurable, and so we have this concept of target. I've uh, included uh, quite a number of possible targets in here. But you can see, for example, one target that people use commonly is like, what's the revenue per employee? And this is what our target needs to be. So when we're talking about target, number one, we want to make sure that the description is just fairly specific. So that means we also have to have a time frame. We want to understand what its units are. Is it a count? Is it by percentage? Is it a ranking base? Is it based on currency? Or is it based on duration? What are the uh, metrics that we're going to measure this company by? And what are the targets? And then we can talk about actual. The targets are, are what we plan to do, and the metrics are then the actual. You have the current target amount, and then you have potentially forecasted amount. If the number is changing over time, you can put a forecast, but you can also see the original target. The, the business management module is this, the high-level strategy map, the charter pieces, the values of the company, the objectives, the strategies of the company, and the targets that are per objective. And then the ability to do a SWOT analysis and then relate those back to what you're doing specifically from an objective or strategy to deal with these weaknesses or threats or your strength and opportunities. You can link those back into the things that you're actually doing so you can see how your SWOT relates to your actions that you're doing. If you have a company that is run purely as a management by objectives, you can start just with the objective level. I recommend that you also start with a one charter period, which is corporate level charter. You don't have to put anything else down. We'll put it in there, just one item. And then you can start management by objectives and you can have each level. Again, everything has a hierarchy, so you can have objectives and then it can report to other objectives. So if we go into objectives here and drill down into an objective, we will see that it has this concept again of a higher level objective. Again, it has this concept of ranking um, and order. So order again is how you want it to appear line by line, the ordering that it is. And the ranking has to do with how important is this going to be to the company. So rankings either can be from lowest value up or from highest values down. So you can decide on that. It's not defined within the system per se. Notice that this has a target on so this particular one uh, using balance scorecard. There's a target, this very specific target for what. So we drill down on the target here. It's saying that percentage of uh, balance scorecard in use is the target is 100%. Note that there are additional categorization or attributes even at the target level from this standpoint that you can be measuring processes, you can be measuring financials, customers. Again, this is from the balance scorecard. I mean, where is this target related to? Um, the measurement off of a target is actually the, the a default. Measurements are the way that we deal with actual metrics. Uh, they're called measurements. From a target, you can define a default measurement, meaning that there are other attributes of this measurement, and you might want to have those set. Each time that a measurement gets made, it puts the actual value in, but it copies the other values from the default measurement in order to set the other attributes. Again, what we're trying to do is minimize the amount of additional things that people have to do, but allow for substantially no more information to be put in that allows for greater analysis later. You set it up once and then it takes care of copying that information, putting it in the right place. And again, you always see this concept of ranking, order, priority. You'll see that almost in every object. Targets can also be related to chart of accounts, which is the financial side of the house. So it may go to a specific line, things like net profit, gross profit, cost of goods sold. Uh, those are things that are normally referred to as chart of accounts. So you can have a title for this as well as a description piece. And you can also relate these targets back to actually specific segments, uh, which we'll talk about in the product management module. But there is uh, the ability to have targets related to a specific market versus for the company as a whole. When this business uh, management module is just, again, a module within the value creator suite, which is actually the enterprise unlimited edition version of this multiple application all tied together so that, that you don't have to integrate between these various modules. Um, if you think about how like an ERP came together, an ERP used to have like an MRP in it, used to have a finance piece in it, used to have inventory uh, pieces in it. Um, those were all separate modules. Well, you'd have to integrate all those little modules together. You know, that would take a lot of money, a lot of time to take all these independent pieces and put them together. What we've done here is taken all of these pieces and pre-integrated them for, so you don't 
have to have that integration cost you would normally have between all these little modules. In addition to what you get within this particular tab, you also get to see some things that show you some of the information from the other tabs. So for example, processes and projects are found within the process and project management tab. So that if you want to look down at that level of detail, you can. You can look at the, what the issues are. Specifically also, if issues have been escalated up to the management team, that they need help, they need some decisions to be made, or something's getting in their way, they can see just the issues that are related that have been escalated. If you're approaching that uh, point in a company where you're thinking about going public, you need to be concerned about uh, Sarbanes-Oakley. One of those things that you need to be looking at is monitoring the, the changes that you make in your company. And so there's this fundamental capability to do a change request and, ch and track all the impact throughout the company about what it's going to happen if you implement this change and then actually monitor the change and make sure how it gets put into production and its effect on the rest of the company. These are one of the things that essentially is required by Sarbanes Oakley is that you track your change control. And then you have the typical things that you would find within the Salesforce environment, which are things like account and product. If you're talking at a, a business level and you have a particular customer that you want to go understand what's going on with them, you can go into the accounts tab and you can search in a general fashion. You can just put their customer name up here in the search area and you'll come up with that information. Again, things are kind of organized by accounts, meaning customers, and by product, what products you're selling. And then you have the ability then to go in and use the Salesforce reporting system, not on just Salesforce objects, but within all the objects. We need all the tabs. Reports can be generated even for the things that are provided by, by a creator. Uh, notice this little pull down the, on the end. This, uh, be, be aware that uh, when you're dealing with variable sizes of screens all the way down from you know, a tablet you know, to a laptop to a you know, desktop with a huge screen on it, the number of tabs that you can actually fit conveniently across changes. And so what they've done here is on the right hand side, you get this little pull down for anything that overflows that would normally be off the screen. They decided to put this little pull down. There's only one here, which is called terminology. Uh, instead of having to scroll or not realize that they're there, there's this pull down allows you to get to. Just be aware of that, that if you don't see something, first go and click on this little pull down on the side here to see if this tab is actually currently off the screen. And you can click it right here and not have to worry about scrolling. In every company, terminology changes. They have their own internal buzzwords for things. One of the things you might want to do is also start tracking your terminology. What does it mean when you say that it's within the financial system? What is the financial system? You know, what does it take here? So you can start defining terminology. Um, the other thing that you can do, um, though, this may require Salesforce to turn on some capabilities for you, but you're able to actually change the names of these tabs. So if you don't call something a strategy, you call it something else. Because of the fact that Salesforce supports multiple languages, everything from French to Spanish to Portuguese to uh, Russian and off into Japanese and Chinese, they have the ability to translate any of the words on the page into the local language equivalent. Well, the same thing can actually be used to translate English into your local terminology. So you would use what they call a translation workbench in order to translate the English version into your local lingo. But you still may want to understand what the definition, even if you make the tab to whatever name you do, what does that tab mean? What does it incorporate? You might want to start maintaining your what terminology. Every person you come on board comes from a different environment. So they may have terminology that's different from your terminology. If you define your terminology, it gives those people a place where they can go and understand. Somebody said this word, what does that mean here? And go into the terminology, essentially dictionary, uh, look it up and go, oh, that's what you mean. Oh, I call this one. But using the word from their old place, won't work here because nobody knows it by that name. So there's a certain amount of translation that has to be done even from company to company because they call things different. Just like in English, for example, what we call a United States a sweater, in Australia they call it a jumper. Even the English languages have differences when you go even from country to country, whether it's UK, United States, or Australia. Different words mean different things to different people. So sometimes you have to write down the terminology and this will help to make your people more effective uh, moving forward and defining what it means.